speaking with one of the seminarians who's his first time here. Can you see me through the smoke? <laughs> this is great. This is Catholic worship. Um, but it's his first time here, the seminarian. And he said, he goes, you know what I get the feeling of? I feel like I'm like in the Idaho Catholic All-Star Convention. You know, if, like, if you're a solid Catholic, you're at family camp. You know, and I was like, that's exactly what I've always felt when I've come here. That's why it's been such a highlight for my priesthood last year and this year to come back here to see. I mean, this is the fruits of some of the most beautiful families around our diocese coming here to grow in faith together. It's such a gift as a priest to be a part of that. You have no idea how much you as families inspire the priesthood. Us priests. It's a, we're really joined. The more faithful you are to your mission, the more faithful we will be to our mission too. All right, we carry each other. But one thing that struck me more than anything while I was here is just how joyful everyone is. Even on three hours of bad sleep, like every night. <laughs> That's why everyone always has coffee in their hand. It's like that's what's getting us through. But it is a very joyful place. And so I asked myself, what's the difference? What makes family camp both a sign of solid Catholics and joyful Catholics? What produces that? There's one answer. Children. It all comes down to the children. Because children are the source of the joy of the families here. And they're also the sign of your fidelity to God and the teachings of the Catholic Church. They're the source of joy and the sign of your fidelity. That's why I want to focus my whole homily. What stood out to me when I was meditating was the passage of the Alleluia verse. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. You are all testimonies to that generous heart that has yielded a harvest through perseverance because you are open to life. And because you are open to life, you have been blessed by the Lord. You've been given the gift of joy. Because contrary to what so many people believe in this world, the greatest source of joy for anybody, for any couple, is the children that comes through their matrimony. Now two things I've heard actually quite often, not just here, but many places when I've talked to uh, married couples is that number one, marriage is difficult. Number two, children make the difficulty worth it. Children are what help couples get through the difficult times that they always encounter in marriage. You know, one person said to me that a while ago, they said, I have, I, it's so hard for me to understand how my marriage, which is the source of so much anxiety at times, is also from that comes the source of my deepest joy in life of my children. How do the two go together? I said, You're, there's, that's absolutely normal. Um, people are very happy with their spouses too. Let's not you know, make it too negative with that. But love has to be open, right? No two people. That's why God is a trinity. God is three persons. And marriage is the most perfect image of the trinity. So marriage must always be open to a third, to new life. And when you're living that out, your love is able to grow accordingly. Right? So that's why marriage always produces new life and leads you into new life. And that's why generous hearts that yield in an abundant harvest are ordered towards perseverance. In other words, children produce perseverance in marriage. Children produce perseverance in marriage. In the same way that birth control and contraceptives lead to divorce. It's the same ratio across the board. Parents who are open to life, who receive many children, are able to get through the hard times. The more that people close off and use contraceptives and, and, um, and birth control, what ends up happening is when they get to the hard times in life, they don't have as much support to get through. Why? Because children are the mortar. They're the cement 
that holds the bricks of your life together as a couple. And the more cement that you have there, when the storms come, and the storms always come in life, when the storms come, you're going to be able to endure those hardships because you've built out your house on strong foundation. One priest I was just talking to the other day, he said he had his mother and father used to always go back and forth with each other. They always had a lot of troubles between them. He said, but one time when I was about 10 years old, my mother got so angry that he saw her actually go up to her room, pack her bags, and all the children, it was like 5 o'clock at night, so the children had just come home, and they're all sitting in the kitchen. And his, wife, and his mother walks into the, um, through the kitchen to go out to the door with her bags packed. And he said she opened the door and walked outside, and she looked back and she saw eight sets of eyes looking back at her. She knew she couldn't leave. It was the children that kept her coming back. And it was the children that helped them get through the hard times in their life. And he said, to the very end, they, their love grew stronger and stronger with the years. But it was because they had an open heart, they, they yielded an abundant harvest, that it ordered towards the perseverance of their relationship when times were hard. And that's why, in the same way, every lie leads to death. It's a very important principle to remember. There's nothing worse than a lie. Right? It was a lie that took us out of the Garden of Paradise, according to the biblical story, right? We believed a lie and it led to exile. It led to death. And what does Jesus Christ say about the devil to the Pharisees in John 8? He says, He was a murderer from the beginning. And he does not stand in the truth. He puts murder and untruth together because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. There's nothing more destructive in our world than a lie. And lies always lead to death. And the world has fallen for the lie. That children are a burden. That children take away the happiness of life. That children take away your freedom. Okay, that's one. That's, that might be true. That, one, that last one. We'll give them that. But I promise you this. The joy that you experience from your children in relationship is greater than the greatest, is stronger than the greatest freedom that you would ever find without them. That's the truth. But our country has fallen for the lie and therefore we have suffered death because lies and death always go together. We've suffered the death of countless matrimonies because their mortar was gone. They didn't have the children to support them through the storms. The death of countless aborted children who are aborted principally because of contraceptives. The death of of countless vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Because this is the truth, that when we are no longer generous with God, with an abundant harvest of natural life, He cannot be generous with us with an abundant harvest of supernatural life. We cut off the very means by which He gives us life. When we open ourselves up to God to be fruitful and multiply he blesses our offspring with vocations. That is an undisputed truth. Vocations to the priesthood and religious life come from large families, principally. Every mother, every father is a helicopter parent by nature. You can't break out of that. The only thing that can help you is having too many kids, so you can't be that for all of them. All right? And so when we have too small of families, we protect it naturally. Right? That's why the more the children you have, the more free you are to give them over to God. Pretty soon you just start like sending them to convents to be raised there, hoping they won't come back. But that's why I look out at you. And that's why every one of us priests and seminaries, we've been so uplifted being around you. Because you are the future of our diocese. You belong to our diocese. We're getting the Cunninghams. They're going to belong to our diocese. Right? 
little by little. We just got to get their son with us too. No, but because you're open, because you've been generous, because you've made the sacrifices, God will bless you. And He will bless our diocese through your sacrifice. That's the secret. Because when you're faithful to your vocation, we all benefit from what you do. That's why I told you in the first homily, the answer to the problem of evil in the world is what? The integrity of the individual. It's not about everyone else. It's about what I do. What I do in my own family, in my own life. When I'm faithful to God, I affect everything. And the answer to the problem of our diocese is the integrity of every individual family living in the truth. The truth of our faith that we have received. So don't be ashamed of who you are. Because that's what the world wants to do. It wants us to shame us for what we believe, for what we live. you got to let your light shine. Shine in the darkness. Let your joy be a testimony to everybody who looks at you. To see what your children have given you. Let your children be a light in the darkness. The time for apologizing for what we believe and live as Catholics is over. That time is gone. It's time to be proud of what we represent. What we've been given from Jesus Christ who is the truth incarnate. And the more we live that, the more we're faithful to that. And bear it in our flesh and in our families and in our life. We inspire every single person who looks upon us. Because it's the truth. And we're all made for the truth. And the truth is what redeems the world from hell. you got to believe that. Lies lead to hell. They lead to chaos and destruction. And what redeems the world from hell is living in the truth. As an individual, that's integrity. To know who you are. And to live according to that. And Jesus Christ is the one who tells us who we are. And when we live according to that in our families, as individuals, we're integrated beings. And we shine in the darkness. The truth is what redeems the world from hell. And the truth is, the reason it is such a gift to be here with all of you The reason you're such solid Catholics and you're such joyful Catholics is because of what we heard earlier today. You've kept the Word with a generous heart and you've yielded a harvest through perseverance. And that truth lived out, proclaimed unapologetically, proudly, is what redeems our diocese from hell, one family at a time. And that's the truth.